Hey, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this pattern in Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. To start off with, let's go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to go File New. Uh, this time I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then background content set to transparent. And let's go ahead and click on Create. From here I'm going to create a guide layout. So I'm going to go to View, New Guide Layout. For this, I'm going to use six columns and six rows, and then just go ahead and click on OK. I like to use guides when uh, designing patterns, so we are going to use the pen tool. That is P on the keyboard, or you can access the pen tool here. You can right click and select the pen tool. Starting at the top of this uh, square here in the middle, I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag out to hit our first guideline. And then here in the middle, I'm going to click on that point and then just drag out another uh, length of a guideline and then we'll go to the bottom here. Selecting and then just dragging out and we will continue around selecting and dragging out and then when you hover over your initial point you'll see that circle icon that just means you are going to uh, complete your shape so we'll go ahead and click there to complete our shape there. From here, we are going to access the direct selection tool. So I'm going to right click here. You can see we have a path selection tool and a direct selection tool. So I'm going to select direct selection tool. With the direct selection tool, I'm going to click on this top icon here. If I just drag this here, you'll see that they'll move together. So I'm going to undo that command or control Z. I'm going to hit the option key for Mac users, alt key for PC. Okay, so we're going to hit option click and then I'm going to drag it down and then releasing there and we can see that they have behaved independently. And then since I already hit that option key on the other side, these are already broken so I don't need to add any additional key and I can just bring this one down here as well. And that just creates that uh, curve here. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. So just clicking here using the option key or alt key for PC. We're just going to click and then bring it and drag it here, releasing, and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. So now we have the basic shape that I'm going to use for this pattern. For this next part, I'm going to uh, change up my guide layout. So I'm going to go to view, new guide layout, Instead of six columns, I'm going to try uh, 10 columns here and 10 rows and then just clicking on OK. Uh, so with our object here, we are going to make a copy. So I'm going to go Command or Control J to add duplicate here in our layers panel. And then I'm going to uh, just drag it up here using uh, my grid line here to to act as a guide here, we're going to start creating our repeat pattern. So we'll go ahead and duplicate that layer, Command or Control J, and then we'll bring it down here, lining with the grids there. We'll select uh, both of these layers here in the Layers panel, and then Command J to duplicate them, and then we'll bring them over here to have them align with the grid lines. And we have the basis of our pattern here. I'm going to access the marquee tool M on the keyboard here using my grid lines for a reference here. I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. And next we are going to define our pattern. When you have your um, selection here, you can go to edit, define pattern, and it will make a pattern out of that selection. You can give it a name and then we'll just click on OK here. Here we see our newly created pattern. I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. So I'm going to go to File, New. This time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then background content set to transparent. And then I have artboard selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. 
From here, I'm just going to use uh, one of my actions. It's called pattern test. This is part of my, um, this action is part of my uh, pattern design action pack, which I will leave a link in the description below. And basically this action just creates a, a pattern fill layer and then we have two color fill layers so I can easily test this pattern here. As we can see, we have our pattern. And what I notice at this scale is it's not seamless when it comes to uh, this size of to this dimension of paper. So let's go ahead and double click on our pattern fill layer here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down to uh, 75%. And then uh, when we scale it down, we can see that it's now a seamless pattern at this scale. So we'll go ahead and use this scale here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. And then um, I now want to save the pattern at the scale, so I'm going to just turn off these color fill layers to show the transparent pixels in the back. And then I'm going to click to uh, define this pattern. Again, you can go to edit define pattern. Uh, for this, I'm going to use my action pack again, which is I just click it define one pattern and it will automatically define that pattern for me. So I uh, just testing it again. Let's double click here. Let's bring the scale back up to 100%. We'll click on our new pattern here and we now have it saved at the scale that we wanted. Uh, so when I hover over this swatch in the patterns panel here, I now see that the dimensions are 360 by 900 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and create a document that size. We're going to go to File, New. We'll go 360 by 900 pixels here. We'll unselect artboards for this one and then just clicking to create. Selecting a adjustment layer here, we're going to select a pattern layer, selecting OK, and then I'm just going to select my new pattern here. So you can save this as a swatch for this pattern. With this, I'm also going to right click, I'm going to rasterize this layer. And then I'm going to, on this thumbnail here, I'm going to go Command or Control click, and that will just highlight all of the pixels here and then I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to go shift command I or you can do shift control I for PC and that is just going to select the inverse. So now we have uh, this area selected. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill that with my foreground which is black here. So that is option delete for Mac or alt backspace for PC. And then we'll go ahead and turn off this layer here. We will deselect our pixels, Command or Control D. And then I'm going to save this pattern here as well. So I'm going to just define this pattern here. And then let's just jump back into uh, this one here. So we'll turn back on our colors. Let's go ahead and give it some color here. I'm going to use uh, one of my colors here. And then we'll change this one as well. And then I'm going to zoom out, Command or Control minus key here. I'm going to access the Artboard tool, which is Shift V. You can, it's under the Move tool here, so we'll need to do a Shift V again here to access our Artboard. You can also right click and you see the Move tool on the Artboard tool here. With this Artboard selected in the Artboard tool on, you can see these plus icons where you can add another Artboard. For this one, I just want to, I want to make a duplicate of the artboard we have. So I'm going to hit option click or alt click for PC. And then you're just going to drag it to the side. Let's go ahead and rearrange our artboards here. So we'll bring this one to the top. I'm just going to give it a name, one pattern. We'll name this one two pattern. And then with this first artboard here, we tested our first pattern. Second artboard here, we're going to test the inverse. So you can see the inverse of that pattern using the same color palette. And then you have two different patterns here. When I make a pattern, a lot of times I like to also save the inverse of that pattern. That way, depending on how you have your color set up in your document, you can get it you can display the pattern in either way because you have the inverse of it and it just makes it easy that way. 
And it's just a, a good idea to uh, save both the original and the inverse of your pattern. To save these as digital scrapbook paper, you're just gonna go to File, Export, Export As. Here under the suffix, you can add an additional name to your file format. So if we wanted to add a trellis, maybe we call it a trellis. It will be added to the end of the name here. We'll go ahead and select both by hitting shift click. We can see both of them here. Under format, you can change your format type. In this case, we are going to use JPEG. And then when it comes to digital scrapbook paper, you want a higher quality so you can change the quality here. I just note the higher the quality, the larger the file size. And then just scrolling down under color space, I like to select embed color profile. And then you can just click to export your files. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun repeating trellis like pattern in Photoshop. Again, if you want access to all the design files for my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. In this video, I used my pattern design action pack, which I will leave a link in the description below where you can get it in my Etsy shop. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.